Hi guys! Imagine harnessing the abundant energy of the sun to power your data transmission and eliminating the need for traditional electricity sources for flexible installation. Today in this video, I'm going to walk you through the simple steps of setting up your solar power fiber connectivity by seamlessly integration of fiber media converters and solar power system. If you have any questions with your system design, please feel free to to contact us through the link down in the description box below and our team of experts will get back to you as soon as possible. A fiber optic connectivity plays a crucial role in modern communication networks and data transmission. It can transmit data at extremely high speed and over long distance with minimal signal loss, ensuring faster and more reliable data transfer. And fiber optic also provide higher bandwidth capacity, supporting the increasing demands of data-intensive applications, such as video streaming, cloud computing, and IoT deployment. But despite the many advantages of fiber optic cabling, one significant challenge is the absence of power transmission capacity. Since the fiber optic cable is made out of glass, so it cannot carry electric power, so separate power source must be provided for devices connected using the fiber optic cable. So now we are in front of the demonstration board and I'm going to introduce to you the solar power fiber solution. Now it combines the benefit of solar energy and fiber optic connectivity to create self-sustaining and efficient communication network. The solar panel harness sunlight and converting it into electrical power to operate essential network components and devices. The solar energy not only powers the fiber optic media converter but also provide electricity for any connected devices, such as wireless access point, IP cameras, and etc. And by integrating solar power with fiber optic, offer a reliable communication network, delivering high-speed data transmission, secure connection, and promoting green and clean energy initiatives. It is especially valuable in remote location or off-grid area, such as outdoor civilian system, large range connectivity, rural connectivity project, and remote monitoring station. Next, let me show you the important devices in our solar power fiber system. First, we have our waterproof fiber optic PoE media converter. Now, this device allows users to utilize fiber optic link and supply PoE over long distance at outdoor. Isn't it handy? It can supply PoE and support fiber optic connectivity at the same time. And it's IP67 waterproof rated. The working temperature range is from minus 20 degrees up to 60 degrees and also provide 30 watts of output power and also a set input voltage range from 24 volt to 56 volt. In this case, it's going to accept a 24 volt from our solar charge controller. The solar charge controller is essential when using the solar panel to charge batteries. It regulates the charging process, prevent overcharging or deep charging of the batteries, act as protective guard for the batteries, ensuring their longevity and optimal performance. So by efficiently managing the flow of energy from solar panel to the batteries, the solar charge controller maximizes the energy harvest and storage capacity, making the whole system more efficient and reliable. And this one here is 20A. It can accept 12 volt and 24 volt batteries and also provide 24 volt power output. So you can power up our fiber optic PoE media converter over here. So now let's do the connection and I'm going to explain more along the way. So we're using two solar panel board and we already connected them together. Now let's connect them to our string box. One goes here, 
that's the positive, and this one goes here. And you can see it has spare room for other solar panel too. So this is the strength box. The strength box combines the output of multiple solar panels and provide overcurrent protection, and also enhance the safety and enable monitoring and scalability. You can see the on and off button here. Make sure it's on off before everything is connected. And the overload protection, and this is the surge protector. Surge protector safeguard the solar panel, the battery, and the media converter from potential damage caused by electric surge or lightning, and it's already connected to the ground. Now I'm going to connect our string box to the charge controller. This is where we connect to the solar panel, so let's use this cable here for the string box. Connect. Easy. Next, I'm going to connect the, search, the charge controller to our battery. This is a 12 volt battery. So let's do the connection here. And as you can see, plugging them in together is very easy. However, it's really hard to pull it out. That's why we need this little tool here that comes with the charge controller. We just easily insert it in here. And then, now you can pull it out easily. Let's plug it back in. Last but not least, we are going to connect the charge controller to our fiber optic PoE media converter. Let's connect them together. As you can see, the indicator light is on instantly. Next, we are going to connect to our fiber optic cable, but then we'll need this. This is the SFP transceiver. This is where we connect it with the fiber optic cable. And it is usually sold separately because it has to determine what kind of fiber optic cable and the connector that you use. Today, we're using an LC connector. As you can see here, this is a pre-made fiber optic cable and it's 100% tested in the factory and it has four strings. So let's use string A, plug it into the SFP transceiver first and then plug it into our media converter. That's it. Next, I'm going to connect our wireless access point to our media converter using an Ethernet cable. So let's connect it, and you can see the indicated light is on too. And so over this side, we are all done. Now we are going to connect to our Ethernet switch over here using the 500 meter fiber optic cable. And this is string A. Let's find string A. Plug it into the SFP transceiver just like this, and connect to our fiber switch. Last but not least, use an Ethernet cable here to connect the switch to our main network data. And this is the whole connection, and it's now completed. So in conclusion, a solar power fiber system provides flexible solar power and ultra long distance, offer high reliability using PoE to reduce power consumption and cabling complexity. And here are some more additional information just for you. First, battery capacity. Make sure you choose battery with sufficient capacity to store excess solar energy during the peak sunlight hours for use during low lights or at night. Second, backup power source. For critical application, consider incorporating alternative backup power source, such as a generator, to ensure in uninterrupted connectivity during extended period of load light. Last but not least, temperature consideration. You should position your battery and other devices in a place less prone to overheating, as high temperature may reduce their efficiency and choose a fiber optic media converter that is also with standard extreme temperature.
And thank you very much for watching us. If you want to know more, here's a video on how to set up a solar power wireless LAN.